pray for David as he comes to give the word. Father God, we just know that you are sovereign Lord, and we give you the honour and glory to your name now, Father. Thank you for sunshine streaming through this building, Father Lord. Father, we just pray for David and all that you've been given to give to us. May we have open ears, hearts, be receptive, and just feel like we're eagles laying on your back, Lord. Safe and sound in your arm. Sometimes we just have to fly off. May we fly with you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, uh, here we are a few years ago. The church kindly presented Eileen and I with a gift to mark my retirement. It was a red letter day, an experience on a heritage railway followed by afternoon tea. It was a lovely gift and a special day. But I, sorry? Well, it was a bit of a long way, but it was good. Um, I wonder if you've got days to remember, whether red letter days or some other form of special day. Yeah, silver weddings, gold weddings, <laughs> we haven't quite made a diamond yet. But uh, some days are special, aren't they? So our thoughts today focus on a red letter day for Jesus. It was certainly great experience for him and those around him as he rode on to Jerusalem. He didn't have a steam train, but he did have a donkey. Yeah. And as he came in, he came in to great acclaim for the crowds. The snag was the sting in the tail, which Jesus knew would come a few days later, and that wasn't the donkey's tail. <laughs> so I want to explore three topics this morning. Firstly, listening to Jesus. Secondly, stepping out for Jesus. And then, how do we actually make this personal? So let's prepare to get excited. It's a special day. Palm Sunday was a real turning point in Jesus' ministry and his time on earth. For three years he'd been teaching and healing, generally up in the north of the country, but now everything was changing. Tension was in the air, especially for the disciples. Though they couldn't quite put their finger on it, the new things were about to change as they set off on that eventual, eventful journey towards Jerusalem. Jesus had spoken about his death. What was that all about? Surely he was going to defeat his enemy, enemy his enemies, his enemies, that's the word, <laughs> and become king. He was absolutely determined to go into the city despite the obvious danger that his decision represented. It was the religious center after all. And Jesus didn't exactly get on with the religious establishment. As we read through the Gospels, we see repeated references to the Pharisees and how Jesus upset them. They focused on the rules and the regulations of religion and built themselves up Jesus not only taught about servanthood, but he set the example as he focused on people's minds and how they might turn to God who cared for them. That's why he healed so many, including blind Bartimaeus, just before the passage that we'll come to. Jesus and the group reached Bethphage, a couple of miles away from Jerusalem. No doubt weary after their long walk from Galilee <coughs> and the climb towards the Mount of Olives. They're safe so far. I can imagine the disciples are thinking, yeah, it's not too late to turn back. But Jesus pressed on. It's uphill, not only physically, around 3,500 feet, but emotionally too. We felt like that. Life's an uphill struggle. The disciples could look to Jesus for strength. But as the writer to the Hebrews reminds us in 12 verse 2, we should keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. So how do we go about listening to Jesus? Well, here in the village, Jesus outlined his plan to the disciples. But he gave them the barest outline. He told two of them, the 
as we've already heard, to fetch a donkey. I'm going to read the version from Matthew. When they come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone else asks you, says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. So with the transport organised, Jesus and the disciples could continue to Jerusalem, stopping off at nearby Bethany, where Mary had previously anointed Jesus. This time Jesus wouldn't stop very long. Determination would be a good way of describing him. Apprehension probably describes the disciples travelling with them. And yeah, perhaps Jesus was apprehensive too. He was God, but he was also human. The use of the donkey was significant. A warrior would have used a horse, whereas the donkey represented a peaceful person's mode of transport. The action was directly linked to Zechariah's prophecy of the coming king. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle, riding on a donkey on the colt, the foal of the donkey. Well, the Gospel writer doesn't tell us the names of the two who fetched the donkeys. I mean, it's an important job. We might find it strange that we don't know their names. After all, several other names are mentioned at other times. It'd be nice to know who they were, but that's not the focus. Jesus is the focus. What is important is the message. Jesus tells the two to go and do a job for him. The other disciples would have heard the words. These two listened. So there's a difference between hearing and listening. We can be passive hearers, and let the words go in one ear and out the other. Listening is more than hearing. It means doing something as a consequence of hearing. The two listened to Jesus and acted as a result. Listening to Jesus is just so important. It's a message for us today. We won't see Jesus face to face, and it's very uncommon that we would hear him audibly. But we can be sensitive to his voice speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. What does Jesus want to say to you and me today? Let's be open to hearing him speak. And as David wrote about the Lord in Psalm 95, Today, if you hear his words, do not harden your heart. So let's be listeners to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. The lesson was they actually stepped out for Jesus. They responded. So let's just have a look at that. We read in verse 2 that Jesus gave the unnamed pair a job to do. Go to the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them, bring them to me. Fairly brief instruction. Like a job spec. Though the job was for two of the disciples, there was a message to them all. We're going in. No turning back to the safety of Galilee. The job Jesus gave was not without risk. To find a tethered donkey, bring it to him. We get arrested for that. And the penalty would have been much more severe than today's community punishment orders. He encouraged them and told them that they would find the donkey immediately. The task was not too difficult. Jesus made it easy for them once he, they had accepted the task and decided to step out. What about us? You know, Jesus calls us to step out for him sometimes. 
Stepping out suggests doing something physical. No, it's stepping out. It's doing something. Or maybe going somewhere for him. It isn't always like that. Some of us are called to step out faithfully in prayer. We may pray and see immediate answers, but we may have to wait for it to be God's time to answer. It can be hard when we don't see answers to our prayers. The four highlights the need for faithful prayer. Romans 12, 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient <coughs> in affliction, faithful in prayer. Maybe Jesus has asked you to step out for him recently. But maybe it was some time ago. Maybe you've yet to hear that voice. Sometimes it can be really hard. But remember that Jesus will always enable us to do what he asks. So the, donkey, the disciples would find the donkey immediately. But sometimes we have to press near. Perseverance is character building, as Paul also reminds us. Romans 5 verse 3 tells us we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Sometimes we hear God's voice and step out in response. We find that things don't actually go very well at first. Disillusionment, doubt can creep in. The disciples could easily have doubted when they found the donkey and the colt there. Did Jesus really want the donkey? What if this is the wrong one? What if we're caught? What if they won't come? They would need to remind themselves of what Jesus had told them. The donkey would be the first one they saw. No need to doubt. They should have known by now that Jesus was always good to his word. There's no evidence that there was a prearranged plan for the donkey to be released to these two strangers. Jesus had the authority to ask for the donkey, just as he had authority over the storm on the lake, over the demons he cast out, over the sickness that he cured, even over his own death, as he would soon show find it amazing that he passed on his authority to his disciples and to us just before he left the earth. Matthew 28, we read, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. A very special part of the last verse says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So let's not forget that when Jesus asks us to step out for him, we have authority to do so and to do whatever he asks us to do. So let's look at how we can experience Jesus personally. Well, verse 6 tells us that the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. Jesus had commissioned them, so they acted with confidence. Unlike the time that they gave excuses. But we can't feed all these people with just five loaves and two fish. Perhaps they learned something. Perhaps it was the tone that Jesus used on this occasion. But it would have been easy to say, ah, but what if this? Or, ah, but what if that? I call this beware of the ah buts. <laughs> the ah buts are like another race, aliens or demons who find ways of distracting us from doing what Jesus wants. It's so easy to let the ah buts rule our lives. Jesus tells us to do something, let's just get on and do it, and experience his power. Thankfully, the disciples didn't listen to the Arbats. They went and they did what Jesus 
required of them. The results were astounding. The crowds in Jerusalem cheered him as he rode into the city. And I'm sure it was more joyous than the video clip that we saw when we sang. Now, I don't know what Jesus wants to say to each of you through the Holy Spirit about your individual task. I need to work with you on that. But it's maybe that he's calling you to pray for a particular person or a particular situation. Or to keep praying for something that's really on your heart. Maybe that God wants you to do something new for him. Maybe that God is calling you to make a commitment to serve him perhaps for the first time. So again, I don't know the detail, I could hazard some guesses, but let's be open to speaking to us, to hear his message, to respond, and above all, to remove and ignore the part of us. So beyond our personal task, I believe there's one thing that Jesus wants us all to do, and that's to tell us about him. This command attached to the verse that I quoted earlier about us having all authority was to teach others about Jesus. I'm not decrying the great missionaries who go to foreign parts to teach all nations. Let's never forget that we have people from many nations around us in this part of the world. It's as if the nations have come to us. So let's start with them. Remember Jesus' promise at the end of Matthew's Gospel. What was it? Surely, I am with you to the end of the age. Just think of the opportunity we have this week to encourage people to welcome our Saviour themselves. We'll be here on Good Friday to pray, but then to go out into the area with the intention of meeting people talk to them about Jesus. There was one after the disciples, they actually had Jesus with them in the physical form. We don't have that until he returns, but we do have the Holy Spirit to help us tell others about Jesus. So that those who think that Easter is all about the bunnies and the chocolates can welcome into their hearts this Easter time. Let's have confidence to go to people and tell them about the real meaning of Easter. And tell them the reality that Jesus died on a cross for each of us and for each of them. Banish the Arbats. In the light of Jesus' words in Matthew 28, would anybody be able to testify that the disciples went and did as Jesus directed? And if all that sounds a bit scary, let me conclude with one final scripture. Hebrews 10, 35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. mentioned the way that uh, Jesus set out for Jerusalem. For him and for the disciples, <coughs> there was no turning back. The disciples decided to follow Jesus. That's a cue for our final song. And it's a song which you can sing just for the sake of singing it. Or you can sing it with some real meaning behind it. I have decided Apologies.
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you found that sermon helpful and would like to join us again on another Sunday. In the meantime, you'll find resources available at our website, on YouTube. So please do take the opportunity to have a look, but let's hope to see you soon. God bless you. <laughs>